If there is one constant in this world, it is change. And things are changing. And sometimes they change faster than what we would like. Uh, but it's not about what happens to you. It's about how you react to it. And so I am super excited because we have two people that are excellent at reacting. And so we have Lovely and Sean Paget who are joining us. So thank you, Paget, for joining us <laughs> again on Maximizing E-Commerce. Sure. Yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah. Glad to be here, Kevin. Yes. So before people might look back up, uh, I was calling you Lavelia. So Lavelia, lovely. I think you go by all of the above. If I'm correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you and I kind of got to know each other from a Facebook group, just talking about like international stuff. And that was mm -hmm. years ago. Um, it's amazing how time flies. And Sean, I've gotten to know you and got to see the journey that you two have been on. And y'all were going through some rocket ship growth a couple of years ago during the, the thing that was going around the world. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah. avoid saying it for the uh, for the algorithms, but no, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think we're saying anything that's on the bad list. But anyway, you guys were having quite a bit of uh, growth back then. Was that correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just like a lot of people, but you know, being in the kitchen niche, everybody's you know, having to stay home and having to cook at home. So mm -hmm. ours compared to a lot of people's uh, did not suffer. It actually increased quite a bit. Yeah. And that was the interesting thing is kind of doing a debrief on, you know, what happened during that time period. There was a, um, there, there was basically a shift in something. So, you know, people weren't going to the office and whatnot. So if you were in an industry like kitchen or home or toys and things like that people were doing really well my business took a step back because i was in a very giftable space and so mm -hmm. if you weren't going to the office or seeing your friends or going to parties you were probably going not investing a lot of into that and so you guys were, were going through a bit of a renaissance and if i remember too it wasn't just in the u.s it was pretty much all of your international markets because y'all are like everywhere yeah, we are. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I mean, all the sales have increased over in Canada, especially. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of growth in Canada, as opposed to like, you know, the things that are happening in the EU and everything. But mm -hmm. and then, you know, the separation of the UK and things like that. But uh, Canada is definitely uh, way better. Yeah. I think. I mean, Germany is mm -hmm. obviously the, the third, but OK. Uh, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we're still plugging along. It's still absolutely helping our bottom line. You know, uh, we'd have uh, moved over to, you know, since all these uh, problems have happened with the inventory, you know, management process, uh, we have uh, removed some of our slow moving items, you know, so that we can just do what Amazon's algorithm wants and keep going. All right. So. Good deal. So we'll, we'll get into a little more of the kind of what's happened since then, but let's go backtrack before then. For, for those who didn't hear the story from before when you guys were together in the Global Empire Summit, um, as well as when uh, Lovely was on the podcast, um, quick, what is your backstory? How did y'all get to this point of where you are in e-commerce? So we started, um, yeah, so Sean and I, when we got married, he doesn't want me to work. So he wants us to have a business so I can be busy at home. And uh, he came up with uh, with a podcast, you know, like how about, um, like about selling in Amazon. So he started digging deep into it. And, and in like early 2016, right, 2016, yeah. uh, that's when we started launching our first first product in Amazon. And then by then I of course met you, reach out to you because Sean wants to expand in Canada and you helped us along the way. So uh, yeah, we were able to launch um, like our products in Canada and in Europe, Dubai. And then, yeah, so it just keeps growing, you know, until like after the thing is done <laughs> yeah that thing that was going around <laughs> yeah that thing and then um the sales aren't as really you know skyrocketing just like before because people are starting to get out and they opt in to do doordash <laughs> and right. probably go out and eat so um yeah so back then we need to have you know a plan b 
Mm. We cannot just rely on the private label, you know, even if it's doing good, we need to have, you know, a second um, business. So, uh, Sean. So, during that COVID, I was like, you know, looking for a plan B. I was right? bored. And, uh, <laughs> right. You know, I was like, okay. Then I started. Well, did, hold on. Didn't you leave your job around that time period, too? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, in 2020, 2020, I did. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. And you were I before. Had, I had a. Uh, uh, amounts of mm -hmm. time that I could do with that and, and mm -hmm. explore different uh, avenues to uh, find different revenue streams. And that's what I did. So um, what I did was I was looking in like, maybe we're going to do some uh, Google ads and send a bunch of traffic to our website and try to get mm -hmm. sales, you know, with our private label products that way. But then I was like, okay, that's a, that's a pretty big endeavor. But uh you know, then I, then I was stumbled upon another, I was going through YouTube videos and whatnot and learning different things. And then I was like, okay, there's a wholesale side of this Amazon business too, that uh, usually people will start in the wholesale side and then, you know, and then dwindle into the private label. And I was like, okay. Um, so I started getting into that and it's a lot less, I don't know, risk involved. I mean, you can do small orders compared to, you know, private label where you have to buy thousands of one. Mm -hmm. And right. Uh, <laughs> but I, I did find, uh, you know, since we already knew Amazon and then Seller Central and all that other stuff, I figured, well, we might as well diversify this way. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started and actually um, I did it through uh, Trent Deersmith. Oh, okay. Yeah. Trent Deersmith. Yep. Yeah. Okay. He had the SOPs already. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to take that and then we can modify those mm -hmm. SOPs and uh -huh. make them our own. And I can see exactly how this wholesale business works. I mean, why not? I mean, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I might as well just go with that and just, uh, <laughs> So yeah, okay. that's what we did. We we got those SOPs. We, we created another business entity. So mm -hmm. this okay. way, the sales total is separate yeah, from two, our private label. Two so we seller have two. central accounts. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So okay. let's unpack some of that because people are going to be very curious about that. So, <laughs> so okay. So you you were you were because usually people are in one camp or the other. You're usually wholesale, they're buying other people's brands and reselling them, or they're a brand owner themselves. Folks don't usually go into both, especially folks that get into wholesale sometimes think the grass is going to be greener on the private label end, but usually it's not the other way around. Y'all were yeah. doing well in private label, but then maybe you started seeing the writing on the wall was, okay, so, sometimes when there's a quick, mm -hmm. you know, increase, that increase could be a bit of a bubble or, you know, just a blip on the radar, so to speak. So you wanted to protect some of that revenue because at the end of the day, it all comes down to products to sell, people to sell to. You thought about maybe running more Google ads and stuff because people talk about stuff like that, but really what it comes down to is can it get you more people to buy the products you already have? And generally yeah. speaking, the Google ads is like maybe a, I wouldn't even call icing on the cake. It might be some like sprinkles at best. Yeah, probably. And I'm thinking, you know, I was also thinking, well, if I'm going to spend a bunch of money on mm -hmm. Google ads, maybe I'm going to have to do a lot more on uh, finding a really mm -hmm. good influencer that someone, you know, like Rachel Ray or someone that like, <laughs> right. really, you know, someone <laughs> like that. But of course, she's our competition. So right, right, right. right. <laughs> or Selena Gomez. <laughs> right. So you're, you're going to need like a brand name a, celebrity, yeah. or not somebody yeah. with, you know, 4,000 mm -hmm. followers on yeah. Instagram. No, yeah, yeah because we've already, we've already done that and we do that, you know, mm -hmm. with these okay. influencers, but to really get some real traction, I, I believe that's the way you'd have to go if you really want to. Uh, Got it. So if you, you wanted that. substantial increases and not just kind of develop a brand presence yeah. with micro influencers, I could still mm -hmm. seeing that doing well. I don't yeah. really do a lot with that. Some, I, I'm like a lot of people where sometimes when people talk about it, I get more excited about it. But then I start thinking, I'm like, of the time it would take to do that, how many sales am I really going to generate? Yes, so, yeah. Because we did all like, uh, what's that? The Amazon, like um, Amazon influencers. So we paid tons of money with that. And then right. really the, the sales that you get, I'd rather put that money yeah. in PPC. And then mm -hmm. at one point, we just get tired paying money for PPC. And then, right. you know, just the increase for shipping, increase for FBA fees, never ending increase. So mm -hmm. when Sean stumbled on the wholesale, it's like, 
I guess less liability and we just kind of since we already know the private label side, we were looking for some thrill. And then of course we do talk to other mm -hmm. sellers like yourself or or, or other mm -hmm. sellers that, you know, that tried uh, running Google ads to their own website, you know, small brands mm -hmm. that nobody knows about unless you're on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And it's really like 1% a lot of times, uh, most of sales. So it's like, is it really worth it? Ah, not so much, so. Uh, right. I mean, maybe you might get lucky and hit a home run and, you know, find the right influencer and get all that traffic and get it built up real quick. But I mean, most most people, it's, it's very, very difficult. So I was like, well, let's just stay on Amazon and do a different version mm -hmm. of it, I guess. So, well, I mean, yeah, because, you know, what a lot of folks don't always understand is there on any platform, there is a kind of somewhat minimum not necessarily they're going to charge you a minimum but there's when you break it down impressions to clicks to purchase there's there's somewhat of a minimum cost to get people to take an action whatever oh, yeah. action that is yeah hey, yeah so mm -hmm. on amazon because they're already got their credit card in there they're prime members they go on there with the intent to buy mm -hmm. they're the most high value traffickers on google they're like you know what what Rachel Ray cookbook or whatever and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. stumbling on your browsing. kitchen product. Yeah, they're just browsing and there's mm -hmm. no intent to buy. Well, I know also, mm -hmm. you know, in that in that, you know, trying to find other revenue streams and everything, uh, I was also looking pretty hard into uh expanding into the Walmart, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know that they're mm -hmm. I mean, here pretty soon, I think they're getting more and more market share, right? But uh uh, you know, and it'd be nice to be inside there. And we did finally, we got rejected a couple times, but, uh -huh, then, but uh, then finally they reach out in Canada. Actually, I have to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. I need to do the onboarding. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. So y'all aren't even in Walmart at this point. Not yet. No, no, no. not okay, yet. Okay, really? Yeah. Got it. Okay. But, I do but, think it, but it, most people that go into Walmart say it's kind of like what you just described it. Like they, it, somewhat of a long-term play. Well, that, but I also want to get in Walmart with our FBA Haven with the wholesale side, because um, I think I can close more deals saying that I'm also on Walmart. If you want me to bring your products on Walmart. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. So that, 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 I mean, because the biggest no you get in wholesale is like, oh, we you already have like a bunch Amazon. of Amazon resellers. If you're only Amazon, mm -hmm. we don't want you because we get mm -hmm. piles of people. So we have to, you know, find a way to say, hey, we can optimize your listing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do, we can run your PPC, whatever you need us to do. We can, we can there's, help a, there's you. a whole lot of stuff mm -hmm. that you could do with your listing to increase your sales. Because mm -hmm. most of yeah. these wholesale products are just terrible listings. I mean, a lot of them are. I yeah, mean, a lot of them are just um, distributors, so yeah. they don't really care about the brand. They just throw up so, a listing real uh -huh. quick and see what it does. You know, just a title, like mm -hmm. two photos, yeah. and then <laughs> there's no bullets and descriptions. Yeah, so what, uh -huh. what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, we're in a, a community of sellers. Everyone's listening to this for the most part, people that like probably like you, probably like me, stumbled on a podcast, kind of started this business and just kind of got yeah. up and running and yeah. I've been figuring it out ever since then. But there's people that like, don't understand it. So like this woman was looking at one of the units nearby where my uh, warehouse is. And the, the, I knew the realtor and he ended up contacting me. I was like, Hey, can you help her out? Like, she's got this, you know, uh, brand and she's like all over the place, but she can't figure out Amazon just because it is a lot to figure out. And if you're already yeah. in a lot of other different mm -hmm. channels, you might not want to figure out Amazon. No, yeah, no, no. it's just, yeah. I mean, we even, you know, we pride ourselves on being able to uh, uh, fix a lot of the Amazon problems and jump through all the hoops. And, you know, we get a lot of our friends and family that, you know, mm -hmm. see some of our successes on Amazon and they've never been on Amazon. So that's not really our clientele. We, we like to work with people that have already experienced the, the heartache of Amazon. Right. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then we can help them from there. Mm -hmm. But the people that come to us now, uh, as I tell mm -hmm. them, I basically refer them. Um, I'm like, if, hey, if you want to get into Amazon, I would 
absolutely, you know, it's less risk to go the wholesale mm -hmm. side first. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I, I do that. And then I, I point them towards like Flowster and like, if you want to do it, it's all right there. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I talk to Trent and, you know, get a little, I think I get a cup of coffee or something for an affiliate link. <laughs> well, all right. Good deal. Yeah. Good deal. So, all right. So, so you use, so Trent Deersmid, uh, he's been a, a, he's a longtime podcaster in the space uh, yeah. and he's got a, a system called Flowster, which mm -hmm. is kind of, I wouldn't even call it like a sauna. It's basically like a SOP software. Yes. And he also yeah. sells mm -hmm. like certain SOPs and selling yeah. wholesale is one of them. So like you said, sometimes the issue with wholesale is it's not like going on Alibaba where you say, I want, you know, uh, this kind of widget. And then all of a sudden you're bombarded for years with people trying to yeah. sell you that widget. Mm -hmm. You have to do a little almost selling people to mm -hmm. even take you on to let you buy their products. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're actually, um, we are sending how many emails we're sending in a week. Oh, 500 plus, but now we're going to, yeah. uh, 500 plus I emails that we send open up another business entity mm -hmm. so that we can do the taxes and everything inside of Canada, Canada so that we can also, uh, just work with those people that live in Canada and okay. just all do FBA mm -hmm. inside of amazon.ca. Right. Uh -huh. So we're so expanding it's all now right Canada. there and, you know, we can do the same thing, mm -hmm. but in, uh, Canada. So. Got it. So okay. Additional so, 500 emails yeah. to them, you know, and then. Got it. Okay. Well, that's just so people have an understanding. So <laughs> you're, you're using something like, uh, is it like, uh, do you use like, uh, this might be a software tool a lot of people haven't heard of, but yeah, Lendlist sure. or something like that to do the uh, cold outreach? Um, I, you know, that Lendlist, I actually mm -hmm. uh, did start using that because, you mm -hmm. know, it, it starts to warm up your email, right? Uh, yeah. So that, mm -hmm. so, so that you don't get put into junk folders. Right. I mean, that's, a, that's the biggest problem with us spammers, I guess you call yeah. them. But, right, right. Because uh, you're going to find yeah. some people are like, oh, we'd love you to sell our yeah. product. But then other people are like, oh, leave me alone. Yeah, get take me <laughs> off your spam list. We had a lot of issues of that in the beginning, in the first few months. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, but Sean, what we did, um, oh, what's the one you use now? Uh, Google. Uh, I forgot the name. It's, um, I don't remember what it is. Google something. It's Google. It's with Google. So it's, uh, um, we're able to like send some Gmail? Email. No, it's not Gmail. Uh, it's, it's actually a, a third party software. Oh, app? okay. Oh, my tongue. Yeah. We, we, we'll just let you know. Yeah, we'll let you know God, but it's something what? like a lem list, uh -huh. which is a cool um, yes. uh -huh. email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. So we have employee that all their job is just to mine data. So it's just data mining. So they need to get uh, one, send 150 email a day. So in the US market. So that's what they do. And then we have another person that just, you know, like screening all the emails, responding. So yeah, we have a team that's actually. Yeah, we got a team yeah. of three we built pretty uh, quick. I mean, you start out with one and then that one didn't work out then another uh -huh. one like three months later and she uh -huh. was you know one of those diamond in the rough mm -hmm. so one so va can do it because there's a lot of mining it's all data it's like you don't have to think you just go with whatever the data is telling you and then once a supplier or a distributor respond then you have to you know look at the product see if it's feasible see if it's saleable how many you're going to order what are they what are the things that they need in order for you to open an account with them and then that's how it starts and then you list it in you know in amazon but the good thing is it's not like in private label where you list it when you know you can do it in like excel file or you create other product and you have to put your own title description mm -hmm. and everything this one just get the ace in Mm. And then you have to create, add a product, put the A's in, and then sell us new. If the if it's needed, if it needs approval, just follow whatever instruction it is to get approved. Which normally a lot of them are just a receipt from the distributor or supplier, and then you send inventory. No PPC. Got it. So you guys don't run PPC. We haven't we yet. We haven't yet. Okay. But Hoping we'll we're get looking exclusive. into it, you know, yeah, maybe if we do an mm -hmm. exclusive, because mm -hmm. really, if there's a bunch of other resellers on there, mm -hmm. then the PPC mm -hmm. is, I don't know, I haven't tried it yet, but. Well, they say if you're running a brand like a, uh, what's that, like 
okay if it's a sponsored um sponsored products and then if say our company runs the ppc and we're just one of the uh, uh, you know if we're just one of the seven sellers then um it will only show if we get the buy box but with the sponsored videos in a, uh you know the brand videos uh like ads mm -hmm. so basically it doesn't matter if we're in the buy box so it's not advantageous you know to run ah, a PPC gotcha. unless you get the exclusive so it's kind of worth it to throw the money in there okay got it got it so mm -hmm. so basically you send out about 500 ish emails mm -hmm. a day did i remember that correctly no a week about oh, a, week. a week got it okay so about 500 ish a week how a many week. how many responses do you get back um positive responses like, i should say oh, positive <laughs> positive sometimes like maybe what two percent maybe five <laughs> or five percent so, so like, like 10 20 30 ish yeah. responses mm -hmm. but yeah. then of those you still have to whittle through to yes. get to the diamonds and the rough so to speak well, you have to get their price list a lot of them mm -hmm. A lot of them are like mm -hmm. distributors that could care mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, how many resellers they bring on and, and the problems that that causes whenever they do that, because they're like, oh, we're just getting mm -hmm. more and more sales. But really, I mean, they bring in more resellers than it actually doesn't change the number of sales they get in a so, day. So they have an MAP mm -hmm. policy and then an advertised price that a lot, uh -huh. a lot of them have the MAP policies. And a lot of uh, resellers will go below that map policy if, mm -hmm. say, they have a. So they ordered so many. And there's a, there was five resellers at the time they ordered. Oh, okay, so I'll mm -hmm. get this many sales out of those five, right? Mm -hmm. If it rotates fairly mm -hmm. through the buy box, and then what happens is you know more and more resellers come on, and then you're not getting as much sales. So then you've got mm. slow moving inventory, and that's just really costing you money because you really you know you need to go through the inventory just like Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it's it's if it's slow moving, you're losing money because you got to pay for storage fees and um, uh, anything else. You know, and it, yeah, at it, the same time, your you're... IPI, your inventory mm -hmm. score, all that yeah. stuff. You know, that's that becomes affected. So then. I mean, you really got to do what Amazon wants. They only want fast moving products. So, right. That's so you're, you're looking for fast moving products, basically. Yeah, that's the most crucial, uh, you know, um, like process. Not just that, even if it's a fast moving product, the problem is the distributor or the supplier. Like Shana's mentioned, in the beginning, you were so happy. Oh, cool. There's only two sellers or three sellers. So take the buy box and then they're selling 100 plus of units a day. So it's like a jackpot. But then they don't have MAP policy or they might have an MAP policy, but the supplier or it's distributor yeah. does you know what they did they just like okay you're a reseller we'll take your sales and then by by week three you see 21 resellers mm, yeah. so now you got stuck with 100 so uh, 100 that's, units that's a hard thousand. lesson in the wholesale business so now we're more mm -hmm. selective with the mm -hmm. people we partner with we want to talk to them about mm -hmm. like hey how many resellers do you plan on getting and you know we don't got get excited it. anymore if you only right? say three <laughs> Yeah, got it. So we, we like, do our research. Okay, we can do some stuff for mm -hmm. you. We can become one of your resellers. Mm -hmm. Maybe your other resellers mm -hmm. are off of Amazon and they bring more to the table. But other than that, there's no reason to have any more than one Amazon seller, mm -hmm. reseller, right? So, yeah, and I let them know that it's not going to increase your sales on Amazon mm -hmm. if you just keep on bringing on more resellers. But I think a lot of these bigger companies, they, what I've figured out is they, utilize all the resellers for their cash flow, their bottom line, right? Mm. So they're getting it right in the beginning. So they're able to have that cash flow uh, right right from the get-go. And uh, but then they don't really think about the future problems it brings on. And and not to mention it also brings on more work for them because they have more purchase orders. I mean we right. could just buy we could buy mm -hmm. all your stuff and one one reseller and it's mm -hmm. still going to be the same amount of sales yeah. unless you increase ppc or optimize your listing somehow mm -hmm. that's the only way you're going to increase your sales on amazon you're not going to increase your sales by adding 30 40 resellers so we have right. to send some data it's, it's all the the, the asin's only getting so many sales yes yeah 
Yep. And a lot yep. of them doesn't know that. They think if we they get a lot of resellers, they will get more sales. So we have to mm. explain it. And we have to part ways on some of the distributors that we work with because we don't have the same values. Like they just want to get more resellers while us, we, you know, we value them and we want to take care of their products and, mm -hmm. you know, be more uh, like visible in Amazon. So we part ways on some uh, um, suppliers and distributors we had and then... Yeah, we have yeah. new ones and then we, you know, whatever, whatever uh, error that we, we did on the first few months that we're starting now, I guess we're, 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 we're more wise, yeah, we're wiser sure. enough to, you know, this is just we're a process of, yeah, selecting, not just because you want to sell your products to us, we're going to do our research on you too and make sure that we, the, we both have the same values. That's a good partnership. Uh -huh. I mean, we, we get both got to, you know, mm -hmm. we got we to create a win-win for each mm -hmm. other, not just another mm -hmm. another reseller. So I always right. make that clear mm -hmm. with the, the, the people that mm -hmm. I talk to. So if they don't like it, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, now that we have a few uh, deals and we have, we, keep doing the reorders every month mm -hmm. um you know we're able to be a little more selective in that aspect you know so so how many SKUs do you have in wholesale uh, 100 oh my god maybe i think 100 yeah 100. about 100 right now. Uh -huh. about that's 100 taking us SKU. about well a year a year it's it, it's yeah it's a year at first it was so slow when we, we first got our first product we were like yay you know we were so happy and then now it just it's it's crazy how it grows and um oh yeah and for those who wants to do the wholesale uh the thing too is it's really it's a cash intensive business mm -hmm. so that's one thing that we figured out along the way but uh but sean he's so smart to you know like find a zero interest for 12 months credit cards well, we and have all to those do that stuff. now you know with uh -huh. the if we want to keep growing because the cash flow so you so you have to have all those backups we're gonna have to work on a little uh -huh. bit of leverage okay so can you walk people through the cash flow cycle so okay because because mm -hmm. you know both worlds so mm -hmm. you know in yeah. private label world oftentimes we're buying mm -hmm. something that you know we won't even receive for three months mm -hmm. and we might have three four months of it you know that yeah. we just ordered yeah. so you know you you could buy today and you know mm -hmm. hopefully you've gotten all your money back in six months mm -hmm. um but you have higher margins generally yeah you have higher margins but with the private on, on the wholesale part i mean it's like never ending like you could find uh -huh. i mean you just keep going and going and going and you just like keep a, piling up more and more uh suppliers uh -huh. and it's uh -huh. just growing and growing and growing so it's really good i really the only difference it. uh the only difference is say uh okay for example for the private label say we order like worth one hundred fifty thousand worth of inventory that would last for six months Okay, so of course you pay the 30% in Alibaba and then the remaining 70% once they ship. But if but if you have good relationship with the suppliers, just like we had, we, we have. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's already here, we already receive it and they, they don't even bill us yet. So it's good. But then you have to wait for seven months for that $150, $150,000 to come back with the profit, right. which is high profit. But then on the downside, I mean, with what's going it. with what's going on right now, we have to maintain warehouses, mm. the the you know shipping from warehouse to the country. Like we have a warehouse in Poland, in Canada, and in here in the U.S. So it piles up with the expenses. With the wholesale, you only can order what you want. Say, if the if the last thirty days, we normally ordered uh, six weeks worth, but with the restock limit, we only limit it to one month. So with that, say you have a product that's like you're selling for $52 and the capital is a 12 bucks. So we have to order like 200 pieces. And then if we have two or three of those, one order in a span of like, for just for that three products would be like $10,000. And that would only last say two weeks. Mm. You know, so that ten thousand dollars, they're not gonna be saying you're gonna give thirty percent first, and then no, it's paid up front because mm -hmm. they won't get any credit. You cannot apply for credit unless you've been in that company, you've been dealing with them for at least a year. So those ten thousand, it needs to be cash, can be paid by ACH, by Zelle, PayPal, or a lot of time by credit card. 
Yeah, you try to negotiate terms so, net 30, uh -huh. net, net, 60. net 30, net 60. But of course, everybody's having these cash flow problems. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's fewer and fewer far between mm -hmm. with these uh, terms. Oh, and uh, one more thing. So you have that 10,000, say you have mm -hmm. a profit of, say, uh, say five or six dollars per unit mm -hmm. for that 10,000. And then, so here is the, the downside. That's why I was saying it needs important to have a cash flow, a big a reserve, because Amazon will normally get half of it as an, as an account reserve. So I tried to dispute it several times, but then they would just really do it. So say, for example, uh, we're supposed to be paid, say 25,000 for this month, but then they get at least uh, about 10 or 12,000 of that as account reserve. So they, so it will go on the next flow, but That's then, nice. but then it, there's always, every time there's always account, uh, you know, reserve for the payment. So we don't get the whole amount as paid. So if it's 25,000 for two weeks, we don't get it. See, they don't do that with our private label. So uh, in private so label, they, yeah, there's no well, account. I, I think it's because we probably, I, I'm in the same boat mm -hmm. you're in. Yeah, I have yeah, right. older, <laughs> mm -hmm. older account, because I think some of the older accounts have different reserve requirements. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Because in ours, there's no account reserve, but here mm -hmm. we only get half. So if it's like 40, we only get 20. So of course we have to pay the supplier. We have to reorder because uh, if we have 100 SKUs, so, you know, and then if we have to reorder every two weeks, so mm -hmm. just, you know, just, it's a lot of money. Right, we right. Have to be cutting it, where are we going to get the rest? So. Got it. But um, you don't have to order six months worth at a time. No, no. 30 days Beginning right now 30, 30 days, days. Okay. because of the restock limit but then the yeah the saleable one still now we're 30 days because of the restock limit we don't pretty much don't have a choice amazon didn't give us a choice for that yeah so as we're recording this and folks listening to this in the future may or may not know what we're talking about um because maybe this gets fixed we're hoping so but like oh, yeah. a week ago amazon <laughs> drastically cut everyone's restock limits right before q4 days so yeah, yeah it's it's we're it's early november as we're recording this so in late october they did that and so it doesn't really quite make sense why they reduced it so drastically so hopefully they yeah. see the error in that and like but mm -hmm. just uh, like in we'll canada so in canada on our private label side we have like i think 36 cues there but mm -hmm. then our, our limit is only like 1500 and i was like telling amazon even if i send 30 you know like how how can i manage the inventory with this with the you know the shipping shipping time from the warehouse to the amazon warehouse by the time it's checked in if you're backed up for the fourth quarter so how how can we keep you you want us to keep restocking but how but right. then of course they're saying they're saying there's no way even to bump up in canada they just don't have the means so I don't I don't understand either because as I mentioned earlier, um, I think last week that um, we have friends that's working in Amazon and they say that they that they're not even busy. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully it will go back. But uh, yeah, for those who want to, you know, like try Amazon, like right now, um, the wholesale is probably your best route because uh, it's just I guess it's just easy where you don't get so many yeah so many products stuck in your warehouse yeah. or in your house especially mm -hmm. starting out you can uh -huh. you can it's a lot less risk a lot less money in the beginning mm -hmm. to start out mm -hmm. and, and then you can get a feel for amazon creating your listings and learning seller central and all that good stuff so also would be the best way i would think yeah good deal Good deal. So other quick question, just to kind of change gears, since you had mentioned mm -hmm. Canada, and I think this probably pertains more to your private label business, but you guys mm -hmm. have experimented just about everywhere. And people will come to me sometimes like, hey, Amazon sending me an email every day, go to Singapore, Saudi Arabia, whatever. Where would you recommend folks go now that you've done almost the entire world, it seems like? Okay, not Dubai for sure. Dubai is slow. <laughs> we closed our Dubai. We tried that one, but we closed it. It's just so slow. So many uh, hijackers, but Amazon doesn't care much. So mm. we closed our Dubai, uh, but we highly recommended Canada. Canada, because first, uh, it's, you know, yeah, the... 
<laughs> I try to eat. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's close they're to the US. People. They're, they're really tax, nice. They're oh, yeah. super nice. They're super tax nice. people, super nice. They're so helpful. And then uh, if you go say, um, you know, like the taxes, it's not complicated, super right. easy to do. And then uh, what else? They're just need. I mean, a lot of people are overlooking Canada because they think it's slow. Yes, at first it's slow, mm -hmm. but once you... You put your product there and then mm -hmm. after a while, I guess. I it's mean, slow, but I mean, things are less money. Uh, like PPC mm -hmm. is less money, right? Yeah, so. the PPC right. less. It's less competition. Yeah. Less, uh -huh, less competition. And then there are lots of warehouse too there that you can. Mm -hmm. So we hire a third party warehouse in Canada and they're mm -hmm. super helpful. And the good thing is in Canada, the sales is just stable. It's stable compared, even compared to Europe, it's stable. Mm. Yeah. Now, if you want to be, you know, if you want a more challenging route, go to Germany. Huh. It's Ger good. Germany's tough. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, but it's so tough. It's really yeah, there, tough. There's, there's a lot of moving pieces with Germany and the yes. language and, the, and you don't want to mess with their customers, customers is different. And there's a lot of rules, a lot of rules and you don't want to mess with their tax authority. No. No, and, and yeah. you can't really just call them up either because no, you can't. You, <laughs> we, you we probably won't understand them. Uh -huh. We actually tried it once. Uh, oh, yeah, once. Yeah, one, she, she spoke a little bit of English. She's really nice because um, we had issue, when was that? Like like a year two, ago, yeah. oh, like two years ago, we had issue where in, we had an account uh, accountant that ditched us. So for some reason, ditch us. They didn't file the annual uh, filing and we got in oh. trouble with the DE. And I didn't know about it because I, I was I, I was letting him handle our, all our accounts in Europe, in, in Germany specifically. So Amazon uh, said that they're going to be deactivating our account. And then there's the letter. So I called and then there's this girl. He does, she, she barely knew English, but... I was she like, through the call. <laughs> I was like oh, English, English. So she was, oh my God, she was so helpful. She answered oh, nice. it and then she, she helped us. So they're actually helpful. Um, except the language barrier is the hardest part. Yeah. But yeah, you don't want to mess with them because every time that you don't file, they will charge you every day and then they will keep sending the letter. They won't waive any fees. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. Wow. Yeah. They don't mess around. Yes. All right. So any closing advice for folks on growing, dealing with issues, whether, you know, there's the, there was the thing a couple of years ago. Now everybody's talking about the R word. Um, so kind of what, what are your thoughts on how folks could adapt to whatever is in front of us? Inventory limits, sessions, it's lose. It's I mean, you're always, that's what we are as entrepreneurs, right? We're problem solvers. So we have mm -hmm. to just keep moving forward. You can't just get hung up on something like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. Well, yes, it absolutely is so hard, but you just got to learn from your failures. And uh, that's what we do. We learn from our failures and don't get you know stuck on that. And it's a good thing sometimes learning from your failures some some are more expensive than the others <laughs> right we've all but been still, there <laughs> yeah and if there's a will there's always a way amazon is just you know i mean it's software run by algorithm there are people that can help and you know if one if one thing doesn't work for you then you know find another way because there's always a way you just have to look for it and sometimes mm -hmm. it needs a lot of research and I'm really not so good with videos and but Sean, he would bombard me with videos to watch. And sometimes the answer is just right in front of you. So, awesome. or, or reach out to other or, uh, sellers like yourself and yeah, give some reach advice. out to Kevin, Kevin, right. <laughs> you, you get a lot I of, mean, you know, like yeah. knowledge and people have, who know. having that group of people mm -hmm. is, uh, is really good. You know, other sellers, mm -hmm. I mean, cause we're all going through the same stuff and, you know, some people might mm -hmm. have the answers that uh, we're, we're not thinking about. So yeah. different perspectives and different views. So absolutely. Those Facebook groups really mm -hmm. help too. And one thing I've learned, you cannot run Amazon without having, you know, like, um, like cost sellers as friends, just like you, Kevin, mm. is mm -hmm. this is really important, especially on, you know, on times like, like, yeah, I always say, you know, Amazon has ADHD, keeps mm -hmm. changing every day, you know, so um, you just have to, 
you know, um, yeah, sometimes rely on friends mm -hmm. who knows what they're doing and then uh, don't be, don't be embarrassed to ask for advice. Yeah. Cause we're all going <laughs> through it together. Like yeah. my first gut reaction after my inventory limits went from about 15,000 on standard units to about 3,700 it was yeah. I did something wrong I what 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 did I what metric did I not manage to properly because the timing made no sense but then starting to talk to other people like oh it's not just me yeah. it's like everyone and so yeah. then you kind of realize like okay we're all going through it together and then other people are, you know, talking and getting ideas and you can kind of get a little bit from there. So, you know, when you had reached out to me um, yeah. after that point, I think it helped both of us. So I think, I think you become numb to, uh, you know, it's like, oh, fourth quarter is coming up. This is going to be exciting. I wonder what uh, curveball Amazon's going to do. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So us, we're like, bring it on. We're ready. Bring it. We know bring something. It but at least they brought it early. Well, <laughs> we're not done yet. So yeah. I just, we're recording this, but uh, yeah. But a lot All of right. people, so a lot of people are saying Amazon is really difficult, but no, there's still a lot of growth in Amazon. Like I said, you just, you just have to look for it. There's yes. still a lot. So, yeah. Yeah, it's still visible and nice to be staying at home. Don't have to report to your job. Like, you know, just it's nice. Very true. Very true. <laughs> well, I appreciate having you both on and sharing your stories and uh, uh, inspiring folks of how they can shift maybe gears in their own business or, you know, try different things to see what's going to work out. And I love the fact you were really focused on not just what's the newest, shiniest object that people are talking about now, but more so like, hey, what's going to get us the most results and, you know, uh, trying wholesale, which sounds harder and is not as exciting as influencers and Google ads, but you went <laughs> after what was going to get you the best results. And yeah. maybe it is influencers and Google ads, but maybe for most folks, it's going to be trying something a little different. So I love it. Cool. So, well, thanks. Thanks for having us on, Kevin. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Time. As usual. Thanks a lot. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much.